what's up? This is your boy Juggy D, and you're watching DXB today. Keep it locked. Oh, meta teri naal na chena. Oh, meta teri naal na chena. Bra. Welcome back to another edition of DXB today. Hope you've had a lovely Wednesday. We've got plenty for you over the course of the next hour. Let's see what's coming up on today's show. We're going to be exploring sustainable fashion with none other than Irene Feeney, aka Irene Styles. We're going to delve into the world of lab-grown diamonds. And coming up, we've got the English Indian, or as Nimi would say, Brindian singer Juggy D. Lots there for to look forward to, uh, and of course, uh, bringing back together of old friends around new sofas. Welcome back to a brand new season of DXB today, girl. Thanks, yeah. Tom. I know you've been here for a couple of days, but I'm so excited by this beautiful new set. I know. I'm loving the sofas. It's fabulous. It's a bit of space for us to yeah. express ourselves. And talking about a bit of space, I wanted to get your thoughts on new Dubai, Dubai 2.0 after the summer break. Everyone went away for the summer, but there seem to be a few more people around town, correct? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. The traffic is insane <laughs> in Dubai. <laughs> Come on, we were just talking about Global Village is going to be opening up this month. We've got Miracle Garden. Everything's about to get started. I'm so excited. I've got kids, of course, so I need to entertain them. And staying indoors drives me crazy. I cannot do a, like one more play center. So it is time to get to those parks. The, definitely. It's that time of year, isn't it? For those that have been here for a while, it's that time of year that the weather is just teasing you. Yeah. There's some days, some mornings, <laughs> some evenings, it's perfect. Uh, and then some mornings, some evenings, it's just a little bit too humid as well. So we're on the cusp at the moment. I Things mean, are about Amy's yeah. going for walks at 6 a.m. Yeah, and going horse say, riding. I'm so. up early, 6 a.m., going horse riding, nice walks, and uh, the weather's perfect at that time. So but if I, you fancy joining me at 6 a.m. to enjoy the nice weather, Feel free. Some of us are at work by then, eh? Yes, you know. <laughs> We've got a fabulous guest co-host on today's show. How about we find out who it is? I'm Sajata Asimov, fashion journalist and author. I can't wait to see you in the studio soon. So Sajata is going to join us on the hot seat in just a few minutes. But first, let's take a look at our spotlight for this week. A brand new concept being defined as social luxury re-commerce. It's Luxury Promise. Hi, my name is Joanna from Luxury Promise. So Luxury Promise is a global resale platform where we are offering a venue to buy, sell and exchange your luxury goods. Um, we have revolutionized the e-com world where we have offered live shopping and we are actually pioneers um, at live shopping. We have built an incredible community worldwide as well. So we are trying to democratize luxury, making it accessible for everyone around the world. Um, we are also trying to combat the counterfeit market, which is a billion dollar industry. Um, in this, we are also trying to prolong and promote a, a circular economy. So prolonging the life cycle of these products. Um, and also we are looking to bring back all these archive vintage pieces um, that are no longer available or no longer accessible in the world. So my biggest milestone so far is actually leading and establishing the office in Dubai and getting it to the point it's in today, becoming a central hub for us globally. So some of the challenges I've faced here in Dubai is basically just um, the stigma around the luxury products. Um, a lot of people were not educated or were not aware, and there was a certain stigma on buying and selling pre-loved, which we are now finding that people have relaxed, have become more aware about this, and actually are supporting the pre-loved market better. So Dubai is, in my opinion, the best city to be in um, if you want to start a business or if you want to grow in your business. The opportunities are unmatched and also the ease um, and the support you get for setting up a business as a foreigner um, is unmatched. So I think Dubai is a great, trustable, reliable place to set up any business. 
So Dubai is home to me now. Um, the feeling I get when I touch down in Dubai is like a feeling I, I don't get anywhere else. Um, the fact that you can, you know, have so much safety and so much, you know, the sky is the limit for you in Dubai, the opportunities you get, the, the cultural diversity, um, the environmental initiatives Dubai takes is just why I love to call Dubai my home. Absolutely love that. Love luxury promise, but also love the fact that they've been able to set up here in Dubai. That's what we are all about at DXB today. So if you've got a brand that's been born out of Dubai or the region, do get in touch with the show and we could be featuring you sometime soon. In fact, we'll put all the details up at the end of the show. Uh, talking of what we love about this city, Sujata's so joined us here on the sofa. Great to have you with Thank us. You Thanks for so much me. indeed for being our guest co host today. Now, you mentioned that you didn't just mention, you teased us a little bit earlier about the extraordinary journey that you've been on. Give us the sort of potted history of, of how you arrived here in Dubai. So I'm actually born and brought up in England and my parents moved here when I was in my late teens and I thought I would never come to Dubai and I moved to India because I'm originally Indian and fashion was just taking off there and I ended up working at magazines like Elle and then became the launch editor, founding editor of Harper's Bazaar mm. India and then came here having finished that stint and saw everything that was going on here and said, oh my God, I actually should be in Dubai. Oh. And <laughs> honestly, strategically the best place in the world. And I think even whatever's going on in fashion is so exciting here. You know, the luxury business, it's one of the hugest business. Every luxury brand must be here, but there's so much going on with homegrown fashion right now. Mm. It's just an exciting place to be. And I think it's, it's a great place to start over no matter what age you are it welcomes you and, and lets you be who you want to be. Definitely. So I know we've just done passion, uh, Paris Fashion Week and um, I want to know your thoughts on it. Were there any specific shows that you loved? Any specific looks that we should be trying to emulate in our own wardrobes? So I went to Paris Fashion Week actually mainly because um, an Indian designer, Rahul Mishra, was launching his contemporary line called A Few Rahul Mishra. And it was great to see the kind of inclusivity that we're seeing right now. There were people of all sizes and shapes in his show, and I think that was really, really exciting. I also got to see the Isabel Marat show. Um, it was wonderful to see how, I, I actually went last to her show 15 years ago, and it was a daytime show at that point, and now it was this big ticket evening show. And it's wonderful to see that independent brands are, are still doing so well. Yes. in this sort of market where we keep talking about the big conglomerates. Definitely. So were there any specific looks that you really loved? Because I know I had my favourites, which was Naomi Campbell for Alexander, Alexander McQueen. McQueen. Oh, well, well gosh, I have to incredible. say, my favourite look wasn't on the ramp. It okay. was off the ramp. It Ooh. was Pamela Anderson oh, yes. and Way Victoria to go, Pam. Beckham, yeah. who came wearing no makeup at all <laughs> and just the way she was and sort of made that statement that natural beauty is the way to go. And for me, Pamela Anderson, you know, is that Baywatch girl. I sort of grow up with her, you know, she had a lot of work. She was kind of that pin-up beauty for being that filtered perfect beauty. And here she is saying, no, just be yourself and embrace yourself. And for me, that was such a great moment of yeah. Fashion Week. I absolutely love that too. And I was going to say, I, I'm quite a fan of your content creation. And I spent quite a bit of time on oh, your wow. profile. So. <laughs> Hats off to you. Now, I know one post that really caught my attention was you talking about how, how much it puts you off when someone says, you look great for 50. Oh, I hate that. I mean, you don't tell someone they look great for 30. So why do you tell someone they look great for 50? And I think it's also, you know, we talk about inclusivity, you know, particularly when we come from this region about the inclusivity of people from different places. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then body positivity is something that which is finally getting spoken about. But I think ageism in fashion is something that's really not getting spoken about until recently. Yeah. Um, and I and I think that's something I, it's really important. I just find and to celebrate our yeah, age, celebrate. right? Not just to admit it and be open about it. And it's not it's not just about transparency. But I think it's about taking pride in the fact that we've lived another year and we're celebrating that year and we've accomplished all. I this. mean, to be aging is actually to be pro life. It, it's it's a wonderful thing, and I and I, I'm very happy to be at the stage of my life. Mm. Yeah, enough about the age, all right? Okay. <laughs> Get it every single time on but this show, you know. Did, We're all okay. Anderson We're all right. It's not aging, aging. it's lifing. Lifing. Exactly. Yeah, that's what Pam said it's in her interview. interview. So and I loved aging, it. That I mean, you must watch that interview.
I mean, for me, that was the moment of Fashion Week. Just on fashion and on years and on a very special year here, obviously COP28 just around the corner, uh, lots of discussions and build-ups to it, and of course, we're here on DXP today, we'll be all over that. Sustainability will be key to that. Year of sustainability is the fashion industry here. We know it's booming. We know it's making a lot of dreams come true. Is it sustainable or is there work to do? There's a lot of work to be done. We do need to play catch up in this industry, in this region. It is an industry where there's catch up, but there are. You just had that thing on Luxury Promise, yeah. Luxury Closet. In fact, they're two of the best known companies for doing sort of pre-love fashion and they're based here. What I do find is there's more supply coming from here. People are over consuming, so they're able to give beautiful things to these places and those those things are wanted perhaps by people not in this region. I think we need to celebrate pre-love more. I think there's still a stigma attached, mm -hmm. unfortunately, to buying things that are pre-loved. And um, I do think that I believe even sort of the super fast fashion labels, actually, we talk about how luxury does really well, but sh for labels like Shine and Pretty Little Thing do super well in this region too, because we're all about outfit of the day and what's hottest and newest and latest. I don't think we talk about heirlooms and vintage and what happens to clothes next mm. enough in this region yeah, but I think yeah. it's starting and I think COP28 is really is changing that. Yeah. Well we're so excited to get your opinion on so many different subjects mm -hmm. that we're going to be tackling today but for now we've got a truly fantastic band performing later on in the show. Let's find out who they are. Hello ladies and gentlemen this is Hot Rodney a vintage rock and roll band. This is Jimmy our drummer from Egypt. My name is Mustafa, I'm the lead guitarist and vocalist. This is Mikey. And coming up next is Bare Necessities. Stay tuned. After the break, we're getting all the details about lab-grown diamonds from homegrown, sustainable, fine jewelry brand, plus our exclusive with Juggy D. So don't go anywhere.